totally independent music festival. Do the right thing and buy your tickets in advance. For the love of God. Now, enjoy this podcast. Hello and welcome to The Snub Presents Elu Le Gras. My name is Richard Loftus. I'm Lavin. In this series, we will explore the music and arts festival Elu Le Gras and the people behind it as it goes into its third year. Today we are joined by Tommy Bradshaw, co-founder, and uh, Tomas Morin, uh, multimedia artist. Uh, hi guys, welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much. Hello. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, actually, the sun is shining outside for a change. Yeah, rarely. With the, with the light on inside. Yeah, with the light on inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the curtains closed. And the curtains closed. Yeah. So uh, good luck to the sun. Yeah. Um, Tommy, I'll go to you first. Yeah. Um, for the the people that don't know, what is Elu Le Gras? Uh, Elu Le Gras is a music and arts uh, festival that's located in Ballyglunan in the Galway Glanton area. It's on from the 2nd or 3rd of June this year. Um, and yeah, it's, it supports everything that's art, music, creativity, passion, community-based festival. It's an independent festival. There's not much, there's no sponsorship. It's all very much been organically grown um, from everyone that's been involved from the start, from the off. Um, and yeah, very much kind of community-based and all the support and everyone they have to kind of come in along with some of the people who are here beside me that are involved in it, that it takes a lot of people to pull something off, like something of it off. So yeah. um, to get it to where to where it is and where it has been, it's been an incredible journey so far, but hugely, hugely thankful for everyone that's kind of made it get to that position as well, you know? Yeah. And you're a Galway man yourself, are you? I'm a Galway man, yeah. I'm originally from Nocticara. Ooh. Yeah, Knock and Cotrock. Yeah, okay side man, so shut up. But um, I went to the Jazz. That's where kind of when I was younger, that's where I was school, that's where I went. So yeah, I definitely went, was in a few countries over the last, over my 20s and stuff like that, but primarily been Galway based. Yeah. 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 So um, just looking at your background and your bio and stuff like that, mm. um, I know you studied like philosophy and Correct, geography. Yeah. That's quite a jump to what you're saying. <laughs> your 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 profession yeah, or your or if that's put it politely, not relevant to anything. I do at the minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, well, that's I philosophy that's anyway, isn't it? Well, yeah, I suppose. It depends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A festival could be a philosophy in life, I suppose, some way looking at it. But yeah, definitely, it can be a drastic change. I suppose uh, from what I studied to to what where I'm at now. Um, definitely been an interesting journey to kind of get where it was. I suppose I've never really any good at college anyway, but uh, I was much more kind of always better practically. Someone was showing me how to do something, but always kind of interesting in like technical graphics and construction stuff that was in school. They were kind of like probably my best, most strongest subjects and stuff. Did you do it like um, with the actual sheets and pencil and paper, or were yeah. you doing like CAD? So I originally it was actually the 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 pre- so like the first year that I did the leave insert was I was did it the pencils all the way up. Yeah. So when I did the leave insert, it was the first time that I went on to. Um, to computer graphics then so yeah like he did a project that was 50 percent 50 percent of it before he went in so oh, i was literally right. the first student would done that so i would have done it in, yeah it's a good 13 years ago now i suppose yeah. well, still, you... still the same case now yeah up until is it yeah yeah about fifth i think fifth year in school you well, solid works i think that's what it called solid, solid, solid works, works yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. industry so that was the first introduction that i had at the time like, yeah. so yeah when did you do the leaving cert it was t- 13 years ago now so that's so oh, two, 2000 is it no 2010 yeah 2010 okay cool yeah cool, cool so um so yeah that was kind of like when i was in school that's sort of like most is kind of i've kind of found that as I, as I went along that um even anytime i was working or, or any stages like anytime that showed me someone showed me kind of how to do something i was much more comfortable in that environment than i was ever kind of sitting down looking at something and being able to rhyme it off like so yeah, yeah i suppose as, as i went along i kind of picked things up as i went and that kind of brought a lot of kind of being like I suppose if someone's asked me like what, what my kind of lead role in it is I suppose I do a lot of the build side of it sort of design side of it but like I say that broadly because even Tomas beside me like there's a lot of people that contribute towards getting to that point I probably maybe lead it organize it and kind of have different people that come into it and stuff like that Um, but I'd never take credit for everything that comes to a festival because yeah, yeah. there's so many things that kind of that there's so many moving parts that and if something fucks up yeah, straight up. Yeah, well, some books up come straight on me. Don't worry about that. Yeah. I'm the man. They say everyone goes back to. Don't worry about that. Everyone else gets to walk away from it. But, like the uh, guy with the fuzzy hair in uh, Woodstock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He, he looked like he just walked away from everything. Yeah, he walked away. It hasn't been seen. What was since. his name? Um. Oh, good question. 
Um, you have, did you watch the Woodstock documentary, yeah, Richie? He's the guilty man. I guilty don't know what, yeah. what his name is really. I don't know his name. name. I, sh- I fucking do know his name somewhere. He's the guy mm. with the vest and the curly hair. Yeah. Looks like he's in Creedence Clearwater Revival. The guy that's interviewed in the massive house. So you know he did well out of the festival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah like, at, at one point, oh, he just something, something fucks up and he just tears away on a on a dirt bike. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So um. You spent a lot of time in the states. Uh, I spent like yeah for sure. I mean I spent I spent time in the states states like I I suppose. I initially went over there on a J1 um, and I had a lot of friends that lived over there. Um, a couple of lads that were involved with this, the core, uh, Dai and Evan, like they um, they had been living over there for a longer period of time. So I was kind of coming coming back and forth from it and I ended up going to like a festival there called Burning Man, which is probably a lot of inspiration to for, you know, people at the core this and to the extended people that are, are helping with it and stuff. Burning Man, yes. Yes, Burning Man Festival, yeah. And how many years have you been going to that? I've been to Burning Man uh, six years, I think now. At this stage, yeah, you should think, yeah, six years, I think. Uh, I went for so you like it, so I, I, I enjoy it anyway. I enjoy the for me, I, it's the the freedom side. I think is the best of it. Yeah, limitations, like setting mm-hmm. limitations on you. Like the first year I went out there, definitely, I was young enough when I went first time. I was about twenty three. So yeah. like when I went there, it was very much that kind of switch to kind of like right. Well, obviously you can do whatever you want as regards possibilities of pushing boundaries and creativity. Is there guards? Kind of, hmm. Second. Guards? Just a, is there guards out there? Oh, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there is. There is like it used to be much more lo- like lawless back in like when it first originated. Yeah. Um. You know, thirty years ago, whatever it was. You know, Part started, of town kind started of shit. on the Baker Beach in San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it started with a couple of hun- with a couple of hundred people, and I suppose uh, there's a lot to be said for it as now, which is eighty. I think it's eighty thousand that was there last year. So like it's. I suppose it's refreshing to see if like whatever way it started with a couple of people on the beach just having a bonfire having a few beers having a crack like you know just kind of could you get a pint what could uh, you get a pint everything's free yeah free yeah. bars free food free everything there's no, there's no money out there so it's not it's a gift economy so essentially once you arrive on there there's completely cashless it's like yeah. literally you walk up to any bar everything that's there all your food everything's handed out so you'd like you go out there like it's quite a big operation to pull off like you'd put whatever like a good couple of grand behind the bar for, like, for the Irish camp which is called the chaos um out there so like you basically just throw out you know drinks or anyone that comes to your party with there for the week so like you literally that's the idea of it doesn't matter where you're coming from what walk of life you're coming it's just basically no matter what when you walk and you take a step over the line whether you have 50 cent or you have a 500 million in your bank account it doesn't really make a difference out there so i like that idea of kind of just neutralizing all that so it's a level yeah. of power once you step into that world it's like we're all kind of on the same level and the same team to kind of get through the week so when you went out there first um you probably went you weren't involved in uh, Celtic Chaos on the first year, were you? No, I wasn't invo- Like, we'd heard, so when I went with Dai, one of the lads that helps, the found, one of the founders of this, like, like we, when we first went the first year that we went there, we didn't really know a whole lot about it, to be honest. I'd seen a documentary about it. He'd been living in San Francisco for maybe a year at that stage, and I went over in the J1, and I remember reading about it, and then I remember watching a documentary about it, and I was like, I have to go to this thing over in San Francisco, and myself and Dai ended up going to it, and I suppose... When we went there, we just went with like a tent, like a little crappy stage structure. We went with one of our good friends, Sinead, and um, a couple of their, her friends. And we didn't know anything about it. We knew there was an Irish camp there. Now, yeah. they'd been doing it for a long time. They'd yeah. been doing it for 15 years, way longer than we would have been there, you know? Okay. 15, 20 years, they would have been going on, you know? Uh, so there was always an Irish presence out there, always. Because a lot of people, a lot of Irish live in America, and especially in San Francisco on the Bay there and stuff. So, um yeah, they, they always had a camp that was there. So we did wander down to it um, a few times and kind of got chatting to them, you know. Um, so once we came back, then like we came back to second year, we, we still kind of did our own thing. We did an RV and then the third year we ended up camping in with them, kind of the founders. They took a year off and did a smaller camp. And then we've been there ever since with them, really, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So were you doing kind of any like event planning or anything like that before? Like not not i wouldn't say no not we used to do <clears throat> we used to do events in Galway um called uh, passion which essentially we wanted to do like like evan had come back when the family had come back from uh, san francisco and we wanted to do parties back in Galway. and at the time we were, like we weren't really sure i suppose per se um what exactly it was i kind of well, i think we wanted to have a party and bring people together and we kind of just did it um you know christmas time one year and it was a party and a lot of people turned out to it and stuff like that but I suppose it never really kind of had a bit of an identity of what it was um, but it kind of evolved itself into with a few other lads that got involved um, where we started to do it for mental health and tried to raise money uh, for for a community or a gathering called Kusan 
in town. So we did a couple of events in that line of work, which kind of began to identify what it was, and it became a community-based kind of um, gig, you know, for a while. And then re- people went away traveling different things, so like it kind of dispersed. We didn't do it anymore. But it was that that was kind of our first, I suppose, learning curve and kind of putting together kind of events, yeah, kind of how it works and stuff like that. But as an immediate background, I didn't. None of us really had an event like experience going doing kind of a degree or that kind of side yeah, of things yeah. kind of just picked it up as we went the different trades and i suppose you know that was definitely a good learning curve for to have and just how how and what it takes to actually pull it into something small like that uh which is a lot of work that goes into them it's the same in any kind of event and like festivals then are just another level of amount of effort that goes into it and how much it takes especially for independent festivals where there's not like you know here's, here's big sponsors and stuff to throw a load of money and stuff to yeah. help you out with it it's just kind of you rely a lot on friends people that want to get involved and like even this year it's been great doing um the jada form we do an open call every year just to kind of see what's out there musicians artists djs whatever it is that you can bring food some of the food anything that's abstract anything at all because yeah. like reality of festivals i suppose the great thing about it why i, I think why i love it a lot and it's like i know a lot of other people is that there's no real restrictions on what you can do that's kind of it's kind of open to anything any kind of performance you can bring forward to it's probably as big of a platform that you can get in in that aspect to be kind of to be able to bring in multicultural kind of artistic kind of sides being music and arts food all of that to bring it all into one kind of area in one space for a weekend so i suppose that's such attraction with like doing the open call it's like this year last year we had maybe 20 odd applications and this year we you know 70 or 80 80 odd that we had this year that's great so it's great that people and it's not just people that obviously we tried to fit in as many people as we can bringing his new money his new artists as we can but it's also like a clown that, car yeah like a clown car one after the next bang 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 no <laughs> problem at all a little bit of this and a little bit of that but yeah like the great thing is, is that people also reach out that they want to help you know they just they heard about it you know and, and they heard it's a community fest a small independent one and people resonate with that a lot you know they can identify with that I, I find especially you know when you, obviously like and I've been to big festivals and I, I love the big ones too they're all together and all this stuff and I've been to them you know but and there is a beauty to them, of course. It's a big spectacle and there's so many people and it's yeah. great and it's a great show and it's incredible, you know, it is. Um, but there's also such a beauty in having a small and independent one where, you know, as many people can be feel part of it to, to create a little bit of magic for that one weekend of the year Yeah, that you can come and be able to get choke out of it. So, you know, like all those things are like little things that are so important to us as an organiser as you're going forward that you want people to come and help with it. It's like, like we're sitting here today. It's going to reach out to kind of be able to help with it and see like you know get an idea of what it was and be able to represent the west in some regard and the rest yeah, of ireland in that yeah. regard you know it takes a lot of that because it's strange for, for galway for such a creative hope and stuff like that you can't uh, really yeah. put your finger on a festival that came from galway not for a long I mean, time the, the anyway. galway arts festival yeah that's not a like that's not a festival like uh like body and soul and stuff like you're that, right you know? you're right there yeah yeah and mm-hmm. plus galway arts festival has kind of gotten bougie i suppose is that the, the term for it I suppose it's more professional than it was yeah. in previous years yeah it's like I, in my head it's always like that 80s joel bosk style like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. like you, you ever watch like reeling in the ears yeah and you see like the big fucking um what was it the the gulliver's trap the gulliver oh, yeah, sculpture yeah. on the beach or like a couple of years ago there was that flying tit sculpture yeah the tit monster <laughs> yeah. um and these days it's just kind of uh, pedestrian is it the right mm. word? I don't know. It, it, it depends what you're into, really. I'm, I'm like. not sure. But yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it's interesting to see festivals pop up. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, definitely, for sure. I mean, like, you know, there are, Galway's obviously a very, it's a very artsy, like, town yeah. in general. Do, pretty, do, do you reckon Galway's sort of getting more artsy or less artsy? I think, it's a good question. Um, I think more. Yeah. <laughs> more, I, yeah. I, from, yeah. From my perception, like, because... Um, bit younger than tommy and there's not that much like happening around ireland like arts wise yeah um but galway seems to have a lot of small little kind of secrets going on okay um, yeah so like more grassrootsy kind of stuff yeah gra- grassroots is the the right word yeah. okay great um but so yeah obviously you have to go and and look for it but yeah. then again things kind of like seem to come and die pretty quick as well because it's hard to keep well it's that, galway that going. things come and die in galway very yeah. very mm. quickly you know mm. what is it the, what do they call it the graveyard of ambition the graveyard of ambition mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah tomas to touch on your background then you're a multimedia artist uh explain that um so yeah it's essentially um art that is well as a multimedia artist it just means that i'm 
kind of dabble with lots of different types of art forms and crayons and, and play them <laughs> yeah no <laughs> um but so i focus a lot on kind of the the techie side so yeah. there's this kind of a fairly new um art kind of world art form called new media art it's not the best um name but um it's essentially just art that involves a lot of tech so the news technology but it's usually it goes beyond kind of like augmented reality vr all that kind of stuff it's more like in a physical space yeah um so obviously that's really good for the likes of festivals and events um and things like that so and kind of museums a lot of installation artwork um so there's these kind of museums popping up around the world a few dedicated to new media art i know tommy's probably been to more than i have actually <laughs> um but yeah so it's cool people are really pushing the boundaries with it which is what i really like yeah um, yeah so when i seen it first and this is just really basic stuff it reminds you of like old windows screensavers the way they used to move and uh, interact with each other and stuff yeah. like that but obviously with the advent of uh coding and stuff like that it's you know multiplied to such a massive degree now yeah um so it, it's it it lends itself to working well with like with electronic music and stuff like that yeah electronic music um, and i suppose what you were kind of pointing out there was probably like generative art so um that's where like the the new kind of technology comes in where you'd see a lot of visual artwork and audio and lighting and things like that that is all generated in real time mm -hmm. so which means it's very like dynamic and changing and the really powerful thing about that is um it can become interactive so obviously you've like we're used to different sensors and cameras and all that kind of stuff and where's and the power in it being interactive so um it's not it doesn't get boring it's it's also because you can do an installation yeah um and it's constantly being fed by these um kind of sensors and things you can have people interact with the artwork which i think is like really the main thing that a lot of people focus on um so like motion tracking things like that so you can step into a space and suddenly become part of the artwork you're not just staring and looking at a screen and because it's generative it's constantly changing it's like when you're a kid and you used to watch a lava lamp like you could stare at that for hours because it's actually that's a good yeah. example actually. Yeah. that's yeah. It's, it's generally <laughs> how i <laughs> how i like kind of describe do any of you have artwork. a lava lamp currently anymore i used to have them though. yeah he's yeah. obsessed with me richie that's really a teenage thing. Oh man, I got a new level. <laughs> 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 They'll come back into fashion for oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So was it a was it at Westerville that that you guys met? Yeah, it was it was Westerville that um that we met. Originally. Where is Westerville yeah. now? Westport. Westport Arts Festival. That's Westport Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we actually met because um, Tara Tara Clark one of the was one of the organizers for Westerville. So we'd done the festival the first first year. Um, in that would be 2020 so when we did it the first year um tara had seen us come down to see it and uh she was on my words she offered us to come in to do Westival, uh to come and do a stage there for a couple oh, cool. of gigs and stuff like yeah. that um and happy to be doing it but again that was during the you know the confusion of covid at the time so mm -hmm. they ended up that we couldn't do the gig because not so many people had to be seated and tables and all that riffraff so it wasn't really worth doing it in the end uh but thomas is doing uh an installation down there so he's doing a setup next door um in a garage you can i suppose you can talk about it better more than i would but uh that's where we that's an issue where we met yeah and actually at the time we actually met we actually was actually a brief interaction i don't mm. think we actually realized at the time we each other were we kind of yeah. just had a small conversation because people have been telling you about it and he'd been it's quite, that it's, quite funny, as well. yeah. it's funny actually because it was just a short kind of like i don't know probably 30 seconds no more than that 20 yeah. 30 seconds we were both all... very busy uh, like kind yeah. of the week coming up to the festival i was doing my kind of installation and I was in a lot of like building and stuff as well and uh and then tommy was in and out i think you had a lot of wood and bits and pieces in at the garage where i was doing my setup and in and out kind of saying hello to each other mm. and yeah and it wasn't until the day of um that i kind of did my kind of exhibition and tommy came in and had a look and we started yeah very brief like chat yeah. but i knew he was 
probably one of the only people that was in there knew what it was uh, what it was about and mm. um you'd i remember us talking about team lab do you remember that yeah it's team lab is um team, team labs is like yeah it's a place in japan it's kind of like i i visited before the whole covid thing i was in japan and it's essentially like a three or four story building it's a massive warehouse place that it basically a lot of interacts with thomas would do like work it's basically the pinnacle of kind of the high end office the japanese in the middle of tokyo oh, but wow. it's like literally it's an incredible if anyone mm. that wants to google it you should google it it's an amazing thing to look at or if you ever got the chance to go to japan i highly recommend it but um yeah we kind of bounced off that because then he was automatically like well that's the standard that he has as regards where he wants to go you okay. know that's kind of the standard of maybe the pinnacle of that kind of world that thomas kind of wants to get yeah. into you're aiming high thomas <laughs> yeah yeah there's no no harm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what um where was the installation in Westport exactly? Because I know the town. So. It was in um, an old garage called Brennan's Garage. I think everybody would know that's kind of the name of it. Yeah. It was um, it was an old like mechanics uh, garage for a good few years, and then for the last few years, as long as I remember, it was just uh, like a bike um, kind of a bike shop. I think I, I know. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. most people who it's would on the have been on side when you're kind of coming in. Yeah, yeah. Near, there used to be the supermarket beside it. I don't know if it was a Dunn's. Yeah, Dunn's. Dunn's. Dunn's that used to be beside it. But yeah. then that's actually where we were, did the art. That's why I was working inside in that area. So he was next door. Because oh, okay. It was empty at the time. I think there's someone yeah. in it now. But that's the place where I was working. So we were beside each other. That's how we kind of met. Richie's yeah. from Mayo. Yeah. I've cast back. So. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. He's just over the road. Yeah. He's a fish head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Um, so you were drafted into the second year of Ailu Legra, then? Yeah, second um, year, yeah, second year, yeah. Because we just done, so we done Ailu on uh, the first year was September, uh, September twenty twenty, yeah, yeah, and then Westville was October, right, we met, yeah, yeah. So. That's what we chatted and kind of. Yeah, like I said, it was like a brief interaction at the time. It was also like inside the warehouse where the projections are. Usually it's obviously dark for projections and different things like that. So I remember we couldn't really see each other. And I think a couple of months later, um, Mel, a kind of mutual friend of ours, Zora's, that is also runs great practice as well. Like uh, she, she knew Tom and she was, I'd been down to her doing a case study for her. She's a sound healing therapist. So okay. I was doing, I was being one of her case studies and she said that, well, Thomas and stuff and then, he actually wanted at some stage to ring me about it because we hadn't realized that we had a festival going on and stuff like that so i that think within the same the same week i had texted melanie saying oh do you have that tommy's tommy's <laughs> number i yeah. want to chat to him and see what he's up to because it was only like a about a week after west that i heard that about like who tommy was and what he did it's like yeah. oh I, he seems like a cool guy i'd love to chat to him and i got his number and then i think two days later Tommy actually texted me before I even got to him yeah. and I was kind of like hey do you want to have a have a call um, running a festival so yeah it was funny yeah it was funny yeah it was all kind of strange how it happened right when you kind of just briefly make it right but yeah we, we sat down with and just had a chat you know and I suppose like from us being being a small kind of independent festival and stuff like that I think the greatest satisfaction is kind of I suppose doing a lot of the you know the bill side of it and stuff like that even though so many people contributed towards it is that you know it's best to feel best giving people the platform to be able to go do what they want to do and people that are only starting out where a lot of artists there's a lot of musicians there's a lot of people out there that are you know in my opinion just as good bands just good musicians just haven't got as much of a platform as anywhere else to yeah. be able to get up on stage to show what they can do because it's one of the hardest things struggles to get into it's like how do you break into that world or break into that market and i suppose to me it's kind of been able to give a platform for that to people that are up-and-coming artists you know we won't be able to throw a couple of hundred grand at lineups or whatever yeah. else you know but what we can do is get your give you good quality high-end music that we think is you know good to suffice along with opinions and recommendations of so many different people um and you know thomas has obviously been one of them but like that is obviously as us as a festival the core is kind of that's what we feel like we're best good at it's like being able to give that and that's kind of actually for me is probably the most satisfaction they get out which actually drives it is actually seeing people do their thing you know because it can't be underestimated people getting up and doing their thing on stage whether it be music whatever it is that that switch might be something for them to go on to do bigger things yeah, you yeah. know and that's because that spark of playing in front of 50 people jumping around having time and might give you that little extra bit of step to kind of keep yeah. pushing the boundaries more and more like you know so yeah just that like tiny bit of an opportunity like that's what happened to me um so even doing Westville was that was my first time doing anything like that and um we mentioned tara earlier i ended up Tara ended up kind of drafting me into do that installation and I just I'd never done anything like it before I basically proposed my ideas to her I was like 
this is what I think I can do. <laughs> can can you give me a go? And she gave me a lot of support um, and a lot of help. And I did that. And like now I've been doing loads of de- different projects and networking. And it's been, it's completely like pushed what I want to do now. Yeah. If I hadn't done that, gotten that small little bit of an opportunity, I don't really, I'd probably be a bit lost now, to be honest, in what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, future, that, that so. kind of opened the, the yeah. initial door for you. Yeah, and at the time it felt like such a small little opportunity, but the amount of amount of things that then were born from it was quite mad, really. So yeah, and the first year, where was it held? Uh, it was in uh, Ross Common. Was uh, it Ross Common the first year? Yeah, we did in Ross Common. Um, so we did it Wednesday, Tuesday. Um, again, you know, like how this all even transpired and stuff like that. Where a lot of it inspired and where it came from was um. We did it. We did a party was for um, out in Barna Golf Club a while back, and it was a fundraiser for the Celtic Chaos, the Burning Man. Um, you know, so they kind of came to to a party and a fundraiser to, like they get like what does that entail? That entails like so, like to pull off the week long uh, event, say, uh, or the week long uh, camp at Burning Man for Celtic Chaos. Uh, it costs a lot of money essentially yeah, of course. Uh, a huge amount of money because you're bringing out you know you're running seven days for like some speakers set up artists like the whole setup is just it's a lot to pull it off food yeah. bar, all the rest that goes into it logistics and all that transport and all that so uh, a lot of money goes into it and a lot of effort um, goes into it and a lot of them kudos to all the people in San Francisco they put a huge substantial amount of effort into it um, and they essentially back home here like you know we and we still do there's still like there's still you know, events that there's fundraisers for that you know uh, yeah. for the Celtic Chaos side of it um, and that we just basically did a fundraiser there and what that entails is kind of doing a party that one was quite busy 150 people yeah. um, doing it together and then all the money just goes towards the camp um, okay. so it's a non-fundraiser kind of thing for them yeah. Um, but yeah as regards we met with and choose it there and they invited us down to the land just to have a look at it um, you know and the kind of I suppose at the time was kind of an idea that uh, to do a festival outside of kind of Burning Man which is kind of its own entity it's its own yeah. thing you know it's also non-profit and it's also a fundraiser for them so you know we always had dreams and aspirations I suppose of taking inspiration of course off that and multiple different festivals we've been to but always want to kind of have our own independent to kind of do as like you know I wonder could you ever could do this as nearly a full-time gig you yeah. know as if and to have something like that mm. now, I don't think actually in general like it may never be a full-time gig it'd be something that you'd have as a pa- like a, pa- a project that you can kind of you know, as a passion project, always, you know, it's a great outlet for, for everything, really, to kind of be able to work with incredible artists, incredible musicians, people who are, you know, much, so much talent and want to bring, contribute on the community side of it and just bringing everyone together is, you know, it's enough in that, like, to kind of do it, you know. Um, But yeah, I suppose then we went down to, we down there for the first year um, and it went, and it went really well. Um, Really happy with it. Uh, it was just... So we initially were meant to do it in 2019 and then two weeks before the old COVID kicked in and said that um, you can't do it that year because the, 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 old, the old outdoor <laughs> game. told everybody. It told everybody. It's like an old classic. We're just everyone excited the whole summer. Everyone's buzzing, ready to rock and roll. And then boom, just like that. I don't know, there's a spike in numbers or something like that. So they reduced outdoor gatherings from 200 to 10. So they cancelled it a couple of weeks out, unfortunately. Is it like the three-year anniversary like today? Is it, Jeff? Is it? Isn't it? I don't know. Do, do, do they get... Didn't shut shit, down like, shut down right before sounds Paddy's. about right actually yeah because mm-hmm. I think they did it because yeah. it was like tactical because Paddy's Day was a big yeah. mental obviously I was in celebration the I was on the same plane as uh, fucking Bradker going to the States at the yeah time. I saw him get on the plane I was like that's the I was sitting next to America and I was like that's the the Taoiseach of Ireland she's like what I was like the Prime Minister of Ireland <laughs> <laughs> going to go visit that fucking cunt Trump yeah <laughs> So he was shutting it down and he was heading off himself then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, spring break. Like, I'm shutting the whole country down but I'm actually heading off to the States to have a good time. Yeah, Sounds about right. Um, so yeah, we, so unfortunately we did cancel it. Um, but I suppose like anything, it's like, you know, in hindsight, maybe at the time, I suppose it was probably bigger and better the following year. Because yeah. you had another year. Then it was proper COVID. So we we're all yeah. kind of way more time on our hands sitting around the place. So, so it was great. We kind of, um, you did it in 2020 and again, you know, Thankfully, I suppose there was the luck was on our side as well that there was no real events on that summer, but it was still quite small. There was only maybe about a hundred and thirty or forty people in total there, you know, um, the first year that was on. But of course, it was like just when things were open up a bit, so it was like, oh, if, you know, everyone yeah. wanted to go, so <laughs> we actually, you know, couldn't get everyone fitting through the door that time. But um, what are you looking at these days? Uh, to, as capacity, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say for this one, like the hope would be like four, four or five hundred. I suppose. Oh wow. 
Well, like that's the each a, that's a nice like that's a nice number right there. Yeah, yeah, I think like it will never be anything. Um, it will never be something substantially huge or massive yeah. like any of the big ones. I don't think we'll ever go into that world. You ever, you ever go to like one of Jules's parties? Who's Jules? Jules. Ju- you know Jules. Jules. Oh, Jules. Jules. Oh, Jules. Jules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down the Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Like, Down to how many people go there? I would say the one I went to. I'd say oh. I'd say there's at least 150, 200 people anyway. Yeah. At yeah. least. 200 at least. I always end up at those raves. Yeah, yeah. Just somehow... <laughs> he does it good. Someone calls... I'm like, I'm not going to the fuck... I'm not going to Jules's place. I'm not going to the rave. Yeah. And then somehow I always end up there. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that kind of... That kind of party goes on for a day or two, right? But... But I mean, that, I mean, of course, that's something that's different again. But in yeah. my head, like, it's sort of... I, I'm, no, I'm no good at numbers. But 400, 500, that's a, that's a lovely sized... In like festival, I'd yeah, say. Do you know, I, that's what that's what we hope we'll get it to. Like I know, like you know, last year we probably including artists and stuff. We probably had about, I'd say about two fifty maybe on site or something yeah. like that. But like as you go, like as you get bigger and stuff, like it is a small festival. But like for us, I suppose we'd always look at a festival as a three day event, like a Friday, mm. Saturday, and Sunday, regardless. Because we did it two days the first year because yeah. the owners of land were testing the waters. We weren't sure ourselves. We were a bit like, geez, I don't know, like what we're getting ourselves into. You can't just go straight balls deep into it and be like oh what's going to happen like yeah. so we're a little bit hesitant kind of yeah, it, yeah. you know but like uh, just especially in common like if yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> it's true. yeah yeah but um, so yeah we kind of um, so yeah we always kind of want to do three days and I suppose in doing that you, you have a lot of people that contribute to make it happen like you know mm. I suppose you have we can have anywhere between 100 and 50 100 just to pull it off like you yeah. know on site first of and course. foremost and then you'll have whatever a couple of hundred people you know punters hopefully to get there but you know it's because it's small and independent, you, you rely on the community a lot, to, you know, to push the tickets and get the tickets to, to make it for, make sense of it all, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so, like, you know, that's a big part of it as well that we, you know, rely on people to, to be able to push it to make sure that it gets to where it needs to get to. But, yeah, like, you know, there's a capacity there for reasons. Just you don't want to go over too much because yeah. there's a certain, like, a lot of the feedback we're getting the last couple of years is that it is small and people prefer it and it's, like, a tight... You, I think you, you get to know people and actually make proper friends off it. Yeah. Because if you're going into something that's, you know, and what it, like say electric picnic has 80,000 people, like you'll be with your friends the weekend. 80,000, is it? I think it's 80,000. Wow. 70, 80, that's a lot anyway. There's upwards of that. Maybe yeah, we're getting yeah. mixed up with Burning Man, but it's definitely up towards that number. And it's huge. Like, But you know, something like that, like I went to when I was younger and stuff, but I suppose when you're walking through, like you'll obviously have a great time with your friends. Yeah. But also if it's a smaller kind of area, mm. you'll talk to people more mm. because it's smaller with three people. You're going to see people more often. Yeah. You're going to bounce off the same heads. So you kind of get, you take a lot more from it, I think. I think when it's a bit more small and a bit more intimate. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes it's like weddings. You know, like weddings, you go to weddings at 200 or you go to a small one that's 40. Yeah. They're just a bit more intimate. Yeah. So I yeah. think obviously a festival, <laughs> not so similar to a 40 person wedding, but that kind of idea, that kind of ethos that, you know, you'd be able to chat and like actually make friends. And I know from from it, I know from the fact that a lot of people have gone to it, you know, like have made a lot of friends from it and have taken inspiration off it and got on to do on great things just off the bounce of meeting people there. Like, yeah. And, you know, that energy and that kind of uniqueness, I suppose, is what keeps you driving it on, you know, and that's what's kind of that's the beauty of having a small independent, it's just a community based festival. Like. Yeah. And you kind of keep the character of what you actually want, and if you yeah, got too yeah. big, it can kind of get lost. Yeah, because you, like, you, but also like you, just in general, like doing big, like like going into the big worlds and talking to people that you know throw big festivals and people who are involved in the festival game. That you know, it's quite a big or it's a big operation. Like once you go into big numbers, like yeah. you know, there's a lot more in it as well. You know, there's a lot more organization, a lot more you know it's things that go into the into the fold to be able to pull them off. You know, so it's quite nice to be able to have a nice little number that would be there um, and yeah like who knows in the field I, like, I don't think it would ever go to that case because it wouldn't be an interest but like you know it's a very much a slow burner it's yeah. only year three well it seems from listening to what you're saying there you're enjoying what you're doing now and if you go bigger there's more risk involved mm. and I suppose there's risk reward whatever but like if you go get yourself into deep water you know it kind of takes the the enjoyment away from the experience maybe mm. yeah like that's what it is you, you kind of you know you, you have to be cautious in it as well and kind of yeah. just you, you need to be conscious of, of people like as well you know i like for us like a core value is like you want people to feel safe like yeah. you want people to be feel that there's pe- good people around the place that it's not you know you don't feel uncomfortable around there it's open to everyone you know and everyone looks after everyone it's a leave no trace festival it's like 
you bring your rubbish with you. you like you contribute to make it happen to like an overall sometimes if you go like i know i do like quench and i kind of look at seeing the big massive festival sometimes that uh, you see bulldozers coming in taking up the massive amount of tents and stuff and i know that's part and parcel of the game for like the big ones and fair enough like you like you wouldn't judge them. that's just what they have to do to clean the place up you know but like you know we try to push it and it's like you take your rubbish with you it's leave no trace try to contribute as much and like leaving something like that overall if you do that put a small bit of effort in if everyone works together you know leaving you generally feel better off it you know yeah. and i suppose kind of being able to maintain that is when you have a nice little you know relatively small enough number where it's kind of everyone can kind of contribute and kind of get that message across so everyone's kind of on the same wavelength yeah you don't want to leave the area look like a no like you don't want to because zone, I, like... that was a big thing last year even with joe and kathleen that we're doing we're kind enough to give us their land you know was that ross common no that's not right common so sorry yeah, i suppose to bring it back we never said the first year was in ross common which went okay. great and then the second year we went up to which is last year uh we went to ballyglunan uh in county galway so okay. uh it's galway glamping so that's why we we went moved to there um and again beautiful land like it's incredible like incredible land did you know in ross common the highest grossing film was a complete tie down to the scent between patriot games and cool runnings now that's interesting. Isn't that insane? <laughs> yeah. Like down to the cent. It was the, ex- the the exact same amount of money made with those two films in Roscommon. <laughs> like how many showed cin- that at the first year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how I think many that's cin- undesigned. His that ma- like how many cinemas are there in Roscommon? <laughs> Not a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, sorry, go on. No, no, no it's an interesting fact. I like that. Um, yeah, so I suppose, like, again, it's like these things with Joan Cotton. And, you know, it's their first time never doing something like that and test them to them they were you know anything we've done in the past we, we also good reviews off anyone that we went to hmm. not including any events and stuff we've done so you know that was kind of you go with that and you know uh we even would do it with ross common they just couldn't do it the following year that their own wedding the land different things like that but you know they're all positives that people aren't going to, like just you know we come in and we respect the land and respect the people around the place and it's like we don't take advantage to go in and tear the place apart like you know which would be some fear with a lot of people who don't know anything about like a festival they yeah. never experienced anything like that like they do hens and a few different things. They've done a small weddings and stuff like that. So they did it and kind of, in fairness, like it took a bit of a bunt on us and, and, and I'm glad they did. And, you know, thank you. I suppose I can say it in the yeah. air, like, you know, if they are, if they listen to it, because it does take people like that along with everyone else that contributes, artists, musicians, like everyone, people in the room, all everyone that's here. It's like, it does take a big wide effort for a lot of people to pull this thing off, like, and to, to pull these things off. So we went there and they were blown away by how, how good, how, kind and how good our community was and the people that were there because they were respecting the land because that's the biggest fear is that you respect the land it's like the amount like that's that's where they live like that's what they own does it and, still look like a mud hole afterwards uh, well last year no no last year was fine it depends like because yeah. we set up a couple of tap water points depends on the weather though. depends on the weather like yeah. look we did it in september last year and we got absolutely we yeah. got lucky like yeah, like there was a yeah. few a little bit of rain, like, drizzle yeah. it was cold like definitely and i yeah. suppose that's why a lot like there was a lot of reasons that we bought a four this year to the june bank holiday um and a lot to do with the bank holiday like if you go it's some people have to leave Sunday because they're working Monday so like to do the three day I think you need a bank holiday yeah because people like to take off like obviously you'd be a bit busted afterwards so like Monday you know Monday you want to be take it off and relax Wait a minute. And, are bank holidays planned like you know when it's coming up like all year long yeah, yeah generally yeah yeah yeah, hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. All right. so they're usually set, set in stone I think okay. there's a new one this year though wasn't there <laughs> yeah, said, yeah. was there a new yeah. one there was a new one this year wasn't there yeah, they had um, one St. Bridges St. Bridges yeah. 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 soon though isn't it isn't it? Is it? No, that it's, gone. Was, it's gone it's gone yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it tells you enough so what you call it um, so Tomas when was the last time you made a St. Bridges cross secondary school or primary school yeah. probably yeah. I'd say I don't think I ever made one no I was raised Protestant but yeah yeah Wow, how long do we know each other? I never huh? knew that. You never knew that? No. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm not a Protestant, but... I know. <laughs> culturally, I'm Catholic. Yeah. Um, Tomás, you were involved in um, the second year. And yeah. the installation that you brought was the Wizard's Hat. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tell me a bit about that. So, it was... It was like an, kind of an audiovisual sculpture, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, so, myself and two other friends it ended up being four of us really that um made it so we designed it and built it together um what it was essentially to describe it visually for you it was uh what would you say maybe 16 foot i'd say it was at least at least yeah i'd say it was yeah 16, about, about 16, 16 foot, foot tall say, yeah. uh, sculpture of a wizard's hat so 
it was about six foot off the ground and you'd step in under like the brim of the hat and look up inside it and inside it was basically a really fancy kind of prism kaleidoscope oh wow um so yeah so the so the kaleidoscope was um all made with like kind of like mirrors and lights and i programmed all the lights and um adam uh, my friend who also designed it did like generative uh audio piece so we had speakers in at the brim so basically when you would stand in under it you would be kind of like immersed in this kind of like light show and sound um, and you could just fit one head inside which was quite cool yeah um, you're looking up and then kind of seeing your face everywhere and um yeah and the the lights and the audio were synced which made a big difference um so it basically that was the idea of the sculpture and um in the end it kind of turned out to be this kind of cool little safe haven spot in the festival where people would go and uh, like chill out so tommy had given us um our own kind of like area where we set it up and um yeah, it was fun. It was a really fun project. We got really good like feedback from it, which was amazing. I didn't expect um, people to actually kind of like it so much. And I think it had a nice effect on the festival. Like I personally really liked just kind of going and chilling out by it. it, was, it was nice. And actually recorded audio of people's interactions with it. Or is that just uh, the social media? That story? was just the social media. So yeah, um, my brother and a few friends... Um, were there and yeah we just kind of captured people's experiences in it which was which was quite nice um which was kind of hard to do it was a very like personal experience sticking your head up into yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, all little thing get in there yeah you. exactly <laughs> we to my brother to gopro on a pole and like suck that up the top and uh but yeah it was it was cool um, and are you hoping to bring something um similar to that or something different then to this year uh yes and no so um me i'm in my final year of college this year and since the festival has like moved to june i don't have as much time to be involved with it which is a huge shame but it's, it's the way it is but um adam my other kind of partner in crime as it is is uh has he's kind of taken the reins and he's designing kind of an entrance way um yeah. so that's turned out pretty cool i was actually only really chatting to him properly there this week about it and um, some good ideas so yeah so I'm helping him as much with that as I can but I'm not really I won't be around for quite as long to go building it and um, all that but yeah, yeah it's cool he's, but, probably in a, he's probably in a little bit modest there he'll be contributing some fact yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, as, as much as I can it. it's he, um, he still does a lot even though he's fine here he, <laughs> he says he's not doing it he's like oh I can't do much but then he ends up doing it anyway yeah. so kudos to him so the um, the dates were changed Correct. Um, yeah. So y- y- you had a bit of news then to wor- about something then happening in September. Um. What? Explain that again. What? All together now. Oh, what oh sorry. You? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My apologies. Excuse me. There. I was just like, did I? Um. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. We got some. Again. Some like a great opportunity for all of us. Um. For everyone involved in it. Um. The first year that we did Ailu down in Ross Common. Um. There was uh, more one girl that was down there. Um. She. She, she or more she more sorry so i think and as she said she basically had an association of some description with, of all together now um and it's seen kind of you know the actual atmosphere and the vibe that was down there and kind of how good it was and how sound everyone was and how you know how safe that the, the festival was and there was not just an opportunity to talk to raleigh butler who's who's the founder of all together now um incredible man like one of the stalwarts of 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 promotion in, in Ireland in general would have started Electric Picnic back when it was first originated and then kind of sold it on as it got like the scaled up a small bit and stuff. Um so yeah he does he pod and fruit and fruit and stuff like that. So one of the one of the an inspiring figure for sure mm. to be able to lead the charge in the festival world to to do what he does to the size and the capacity can honestly blows my mind as well. And even when mm. I see it, it's like even to pull something out like that off, it's a big admiration for him. So um yeah he, he, we went to meet him um that was after the that was after the first year um and it was a quite close to all together which is the august bank holiday um and it was kind of once we had the actual chat with him initially it was just probably a year too premature for us because we were focused on doing our own in september and we just weren't sure beforehand and of course yeah. it just didn't work out the timing of it i think it was too big of a project to take on at the time we just kind of needed another solid year under our belt after mm-hmm. learning so much in the first year because again not knowing what what was going to happen and it's like the same it's like you know you 
that's the beauty of the festival is the excitement of it as well that you don't really know what's going to happen on the, do you, you, know, have, do you have dirt bikes at the festival <laughs> yeah, not yet I know. Uh-huh. I think I have a man that might quads. bring some though <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be great wouldn't it golf yeah. carts and quads golf carts sure. some wrestling that was another one that was moved at recently golf carts and poutine poutine yeah, yeah poutine that's, it, that's your own stall you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a new special. Drink some butchy and drive some quad bikes around the place. Fuck yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. No problem. That sounds like a more of a burning man thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It really does. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I think it's a bit more lawless, but we'll see what we can do, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you had the per- after that year when we kind of went to have the chat, it was kind of just more initially that it didn't make sense. Um, and then we did the second year, which again was a great success and everyone had a great time. And I think the kind of the word kind of spread a little bit more and I suppose bring it back to like the forms the application I think that told this year with the amount of people who heard about it you know um, and thankfully we went to meet him again re- like you know before Christmas and stuff like that went down to walk the land where all together and I was on down in Waterford and it's a lovely place it's beautiful it's the mm. it's the largest privately owned estate in Ireland is it yeah it's incredible it's it's definitely the nicest location I've ever been for a festival definitely. yeah, yeah, yeah you, it's ideal. Ideal. I was there last oh you were there yeah. last year I was, that was my first year last yeah. year as well so we went you down you were at that we had the same conversation in a different episode. <laughs> <laughs> Plug in your other episode now. Which, which episode? Uh, I can't remember. Probably with um, Mitch, I'd say. Probably. You, okay. when, when Audrey was over. Audrey Byron. Byron. Yeah. What? Yeah. What, did you, she, had, she you, had, you had the same reaction. <laughs> <laughs> huh, sorry. Yeah. I don't go to festivals anymore, lads. Yeah. Too much acid in my youth. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But, um... So to, to to cycle back to mm. um, Elu Le Gras. So um, what do you have planned for everyone for this year then? Um, so yeah, I suppose yeah, I suppose for Elu this year. Um, do you mean for all together now? I suppose all together now. Yeah, it's like we basically he's invited us to do an area down there this year. So mm. we'll be doing that in August bank holiday. So we'll be doing ours in June that in August. Um, so yeah, that would be in the pipeline after that to do two what, live live stage down there, live bands and a DJ down there have their own little area. So that's a huge excitement for us, definitely. Yeah. So we're looking forward to doing that. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a big event for everyone involved. It's a great platform for a lot of different arts and musicians and anyone that's part of you know the Guadalupe community to to bring people to the floor. So we're looking forward to that, definitely. Very exciting, big opportunity. Very thankful for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to bring it back to Elu, like like for Elu this year, we've definitely like obviously we're doing a certain size of the festival that's kind of we've opened up as diverse as you possibly can like i mean there's a huge passion within the group like i'm massive into my food and cooking and stuff like that like i'd love to do you know food exhibition expos and all that i suppose it's just with the size of what it is you need to be realistic of what you can pull off you know without going mad and throwing like you have this insane probably pull off a curry I could pull off a curry yeah chickpea curry i'd say what <laughs> i'm doing some pillow rice <laughs> but uh yeah, like there's loads of things that like we'd love to do, and you know, I suppose you just need to be realistic in our budgets and how we actually pull it off. And you know, we do rely like solely on our ticket sales and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's always a balance of trying to be able to get people through the door, uh, and then obviously wanting to do everything bigger, better, <laughs> wilder, stronger. You know, as like as much as you possibly can. Yeah. We'd love to, you know, it's just need to be realistic what it is. So for this year, we definitely have like proper live big bands that are coming in. We have our own stage that are on the water. It's gonna be separate to what it was last year. Uh, we're gonna introduce a new stage down by a church that's on site and stuff like that. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, I think there'll be over, be anywhere from I think 150 yeah, to like nearly 200 maybe, to contributing towards maybe 160 artists. To, oh wow! To, to playing wow. over that's the weekend or something like that. So there's a church on site. What yeah. is the place? <laughs> what is yeah, the I, place? In, in my head, it's not a farm. No, it's <laughs> no, it's it's a camping and glamping business. That's that's essentially it's, well, it's it's hard to describe it. <laughs> it, it is hard to explain. Yeah. It is, but yeah. like it, it's. It is a camping and glamping business, but they don't really a mini do... Glendalough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> mini Glendalough. That's probably a good way of saying that. But they, they don't really do that as much anymore. They used to do it. Um, they used to have yurts and stuff on site. They used to rent out, but then they could they had to get rid of them for, for some reason. I'm not exactly sure what the reason was, but they they had to get rid of them anyway. So they kind of do like small weddings or like hens and stuff that they come in on the weekends. So yeah. people stay there. Um, do they do stags. No. I think they did one they said the <laughs> I, think they, I think they literally I think they literally did one and say like, not a chance yeah. I have a feeling I don't even know if they even did I made it smart enough I not to even do one I feel they wanted to find a Richie stag <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's amazing they'll, they'll, they'll host the festival for two years running, but they won't, <laughs> yeah, they won't yeah, do it stag, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I think they kind of learned that they learned that the hard way that I think stags are maybe a bit messier but um, yeah so like 
it's it, it's an old bell tower that was in sight. It's it's an old building, and there was a church that were the original buildings in sight, and they bought it when it was a ruins. I think I think it was maybe thirty or forty years ago, um, and then he rebuilt. He's a builder himself and very handy with his hands, he, and he's built a lot of like a frames accommodation that are on site and stuff like that, and sheds and different things, um, and a lot of the furniture and stuff he's built himself. And then he rebuilt the bell tower, and then he rebuilt the cottage, and then wow. he did up all the churches on site. It's an old, it's an old school L church, very quite small, you know, like nothing too big. Uh, but that was the original building that's on there, so. You know, it's high rise ceilings, got the cool glass and stuff like that. We're it's a good, it's an incredible site, and to yeah, be honest, gorgeous. No, nobody so. actually they don't really promote it as much, but here I am promoting it. So yeah, 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 as yeah. if they don't like it's no, word of mouth kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where kind in of, County Galway is it again? It's in Ballygloon. So it's about if you're going out towards, uh, it's like Clare, between Clare Galway and Ormore. Oh, more. All right, okay. Oh, right. If you're halfway there, yeah, yeah I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Clare Galway or more outside so, so it's kind of like if you keep going past course, Clare Galway, you go to go past right. that big shitty hotel yeah and then the pitch that's there and then you oh, go the right pitch. there and then if you keep going across that way it'll bring you across okay, to okay cool um, oh that's a grand old spot yeah, it's, it's a beautiful spot yeah. no honestly it's I, the only reason really that we heard about it was because um, like I said they have to get rid of those yurts that they had on site that's the place that we did it the year before in Roscommon in Wesley Tuesday spot um, they actually bought the yurts off Joe and Kathleen Oh right! Because they got rid of them, and they're like, "There's actually a place up in Galway." Because we like, it was funny. It was, we rang literally after that. We were like, "Right, well, let's just explore Ireland and see where you could do." It. We weren't married to anywhere. Like, Galway is the ideal scenario because we're, yeah. we're from mm. Galway. But we rang around the whole country, and we went to a few different spots. And the only reason that we, because this place wasn't really online, so we'd actually like we googled as much as you could. But we like, and then Galway, like we heard about it, and we eventually found a number for it online. Yeah. We rang them, and they were kind enough to take out and. Obviously, Wes and Tuesday were, had great things to say about it, so they just couldn't host it again. They, a few events themselves, you know. Of course. So they put, like you know good recommendation, everything else, and all our letters that we had from the past events that we've done, and um, yeah, it's it's a it's a beautiful land. It really is like it's incredible. Like and you know it's the the amount of care that they put into the land was like that was the biggest part about all of it. I just knew because they were around for the whole weekend, but they had their friends in and stuff like that. Like they did enjoy it. They were yeah. a bit obviously apprehensive, kind of like, gee, like what's going on at the festival, yeah. you know, as yeah. anyone would. Like, even if I was having with my land, I was like, who are these boys coming in yeah. or whatever, you Damn know? Hippies. Who are all these yeah. boys? <laughs> coming in? It's like, who are these guys? What's going to happen here? So I we're a little, bit on, so little bit on edge for the weekend, but like, as it kind of went on, they kind of, you know, yeah, mellowed yeah. out and chilled out a small bit and saw that everyone was actually sound, everyone sound. There wasn't yeah. any badness or everyone was cool. Yeah, the, the one thing I think I remember chatting to Joe and Kathleen on the Sunday and people were kind of heading off. And they just couldn't get over like the kindness and how friendly people were. So at first mm. they were very apprehensive with all these people in their costumes and stuff showing up. But um, yeah, they couldn't they couldn't get over just the whole ethos and how just like kind and yeah, people really like take taking care of the space. Mm. Um, which yeah, which I suppose that's what the festival is about, and that's why I, Tommy likes has talked about keeping in like in low numbers you get the right yeah crowd and the right people yeah. and it's usually word of mouth you tell friends or friends and, and nice it makes young a huge people. makes it yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh we're a nice old bunch then yeah, yeah. yeah. and they but, know their limits yeah yeah, yeah. They know, but, they, they, yeah they, exactly yeah they know the experience they know they know what they what they do though what they do like and don't like so for people um that haven't bought tickets where can where can they find Ailu Le Gras where uh, can you can they find Ailu Le Gras if you, we have a website if you wanted to google Ailu Le Gras um, can you spell that uh, it was E father A L U father L E G O father or Brilliant. A father oh, what does Thank it mean you. in English uh, escape for... with love oh lovely yeah yeah I went to what does it say in English escape with love it's, okay great yeah so um, yeah I went to an all Irish primary school school called Nodge and Jazz as well so yeah, Irish is definitely prevalent, like speaking it as well, and to try to incorporate that as much as we can in the festival as well. Okay. There's a lot of that, and uh, that we want to add to it as well as much as we go along to it. You know, I'm gonna add be a rooted festival, and that's a lot of it. Why it's community based as well, and blessedly it's in the Guelph as well. So, um, yeah, that's where if you want it, sorry, if you want to get the tickets. Ailu Gaul, you'll get it on get it online. You don't need to spell it with the father for people who might get confused <laughs> by Irish. E A L U L L E G R A. You'll you'll get it that way too. Um, and then we're on Instagram or on Facebook as well um, and yeah all, like there's contacts on there as well if there's anything that people think they can contribute or want to contribute like we're, we're open ears we'll listen to anyone if people want to get involved or whatever they think they can bring to the table to help um, then yeah there's all contacts and emails and stuff on our website and yeah reach out no worries 
fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? Jinx. What? Jinx. Are we both fantastic at the same <laughs> yeah. time? Yeah. Uh, so thanks so much, lads, for coming in. No, um, no. Tomas. Thanks Tommy. for having us. Appreciate it, Victor. No problem. Yeah, thank yes. you very much. It's Brilliant. Lovely. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, keep an eye out for the next episode of uh, The Snub Presents Elu Le Gras. <laughs> 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 bye, bye, bye. <laughs>